was a stretch. That was a stretch in my humble opinion. If you haven't been paying attention to the news, let me just give you a little bit here because there's numerous things that I'd like to discuss today. I want to talk about a term called, um, well, it's affluenza. Can you say that? Affluenza. To me, that's a difficult word to say. I don't know why. Affluenza. And if you don't know what that means, basically, that's a disease that that affects the affluent. Well to do, well off. They got money. Load it. Okay. And I want to tell you the story of a young man with a promising future. He's got the world, the world right beneath his feet. He comes from a wealthy family. Okay. I believe involved with athletics and ends up on trial for rape. Uh, not only has the judge's decision in this case come under fire by many critics, including uh, victim advocates, and I will say rightly so. Now, the father's most recent comments that have come to, the, to, to come to light is just driving a lot of people crazy. It was only 20 minutes. 20 minutes? It was only? We got to talk about that. Affluenza. Do you know anyone with affluenza? I don't know anyone with affluenza. I've never had affluenza. I mean, if you keep saying it over and over again, it sounds like it could be some kind of disease or a cure to a disease, some kind of medicine. Affluenza. We must discuss that. Also, Hillary Clinton, it looks like she has reached the magical threshold number, all right, to now statistically... Uh, lay claim to the Democratic Party nomination. That's right. And Donald Trump most recently took a little heat because he's in California, right? And he's just, I guess he's just riffing. From what I've read about Donald Trump, he doesn't read or have any speeches that are written for him. Everything you see in here is off the dome. Now that was That was two or three months ago. Well, it's about two months ago. So who knows what's changed since the fact that he's now become the Republican uh, candidate. That's what it looks like anyway. So that would explain some of the off the dome silliness that he comes with from time to time. So he's out of California and he's like, look over here. Look over here. Let, that's my African-American. Yeah, that's my. He made the God awful mistake of using possessive pronouns. You can't do that with black folks, man. What you trying to say? You own us? What what you trying to say? What you trying to say, Mr. Trump? What are you trying to say? That's my African-American over there. And I think he was just so caught up to see a black face. He said, well, okay, let me try to let me try to connect with this person. The media caught up with this man who, by the way, is, as I understand it, is actually a political candidate. And after talking with him, well, let's just say it's just not too flattering for Mr. Donald Trump. If you got the details, well, great for you. If you don't, stand by. I'm going to share with you everything that I know. My name is Nathan Ivey. I'm live. I'm local. And I'm vocal. This is the Nathan Ivey Show. Okay, so Sarah, I'm dropping you off at Emily's. Yep. And Josh, you're going to? Soccer, Dad. Soccer practice. Right. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my short shorts. What? No! Yep, and my dorky dad hat, and I'm going to do my dad dance for all your friends. They'll love it! Seriously? Why? Because I like my short shorts. Of course, I could be talked out of it if you guys would just buckle up your seatbelts without giving me a hard time. It's important to get your kids to buckle up for safety, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, all it takes is your parental powers of persuasion. Okay, okay, we're buckling up. See, all buckled. Good choice. I'll just have to do my dad dance at dinner time. What, what? No! Do what you have to to make sure your kids are wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. Okay, so five tacos of cheese and a large soda, that's $10.
$10,012. Please drive around. Wait, 10000 what? It's obvious you're buzzed and driving. I've only had a few. I'm fine. Yeah, the food's 12 bucks, but getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Please drive around. Actually, just park and come in. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Now back to the show. Good morning, good morning. Welcome back. Currently 7.24 a.m. in the Queen City. Nate Ivey behind the microphone, but always ahead of the curve. Welcome back to the Nathan Ivey Show. The last honest place in America brought to you by the good folks at Superlative Media. And let's get back into it. I'm reading about the details of Muhammad Ali's funeral services in Louisville. And from what I'm reading, his body was returned on Sunday to his hometown. That's Louisville, Kentucky. Do you know anyone in Louisville? And he's going to be laid to rest and honored in a traditional Muslim funeral on Thursday. How about that? Donald Trump's has been, he's been bringing out the races, hasn't he? What is it about Donald Trump that brings out those more racially charged elements in our society? Well, it's what the man is saying. He wants to go after Muslim uh, judges because he thinks that they might be swayed by their religiosity. What? He wants to bar people, uh, even if they're refugees, uh, from wars that on some level the United States has some culpability in creating. We never talk about that. He wants to lock off the border. You know, I had to get with the mayor about that. He even admitted live on on this very show. Like, yeah, that was a mistake, Nate. Yeah, I know it was a mistake. When you represent, uh, 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 when, you, when you're in a position like that, that, that is not the stature or the aura or the philosophy that you want to project or promote. <laughs> That's never good. This is sad right here. I'm touched by the passing of Muhammad Ali. A lot of these stars, man, eh, Fife Dog, eh. I mean, you know, I'm into hip hop and all, and I was very entertained, but eh, we all have our time. We all have our time. I I do have to correct something, though. I keep hearing, oh, he changed, speaking of Muhammad Ali, and I think that people really mean the best, some people who are saying this, and some people are trying to mislead you. And here's what I mean. And I know for a fact, because I know the nature of people who are into internet radio, very intelligent, watch people who like talk radio, you know, my listeners, tech savvy, Uh, especially with the early days of this show, just putting up links and having people follow the link. Not everybody can do that. And I was just in a meeting and I was asked a question about the audience. And, you know, the more I thought about it, I thought, yeah, yeah, very tech savvy. But anyway, um, Muhammad Ali, here's what's going on right now. I keep hearing this and I know you've heard it as well because it's everywhere. The, the president said, oh, he, Muhammad Ali, he changed the world. Muhammad Ali, he changed the world. I've heard that several times. I even believe I heard a clip of uh, Reverend Al, Al Sharpton, Reverend CI7. That's his FBI name. <laughs> I haven't forgotten. I am not I'm the same OG. Anyway, so I hear Reverend CI7. And he's like, Muhammad Ali changed the world. And I'm like, did Muhammad Ali really change the world? Because I don't think so. I mean, if Muhammad Ali had really changed the world, then we never would have had the war in Iraq. Never would have had the war in Iraq if, uh, Obama, if Muhammad Ali changed the world. I think that he uh, he made a mark significantly. But when I hear he changed the world, I think some people are saying just out of a just uh, an honest, uh, good spirited, this is how they feel. Like maybe he, they feel like he impacted their life. Okay, so therefore he must have changed the world because you don't have a personal relationship with them. So there's so many degrees of separation. So I get that. I think that's innocent. On the other hand, I think they're trying to overblow his impact. 
while they maintain control. I mean, think about this. Muhammad Ali was a pacifist. His religiosity, his religious beliefs said, listen, I don't believe in war. The backdrop, right, of why he was so great was because he stood in opposition of the war. It's almost as if that reality has been like, has been very cleverly, very carefully dissected from the story. No, he was against war, all war, period. What's the difference between the Vietnam War and the war in Iraq? What's the difference? It was some BS. It got a lot of people killed. And it made the world less safe. What, what did, what's the difference? So if we had really changed the world, we would have learned our lesson from Vietnam. But we didn't. We didn't. So, I mean, let's be a little bit more uh, definitive and focused and intentional. He changed the world. Oh, uh, mm. He definitely caught the world's attention. That's for sure. But where's the evidence that Ali changed the world? And I don't blame Ali. I blame us. I'm not blaming Ali. I'm not blaming the messenger. I'm, the, I'm blaming those who believe they got the message, but they failed to act. So these same politicians that voted for the war in Iraq have been running around the country the last couple of days talking about Ali this and Ali that. Well, when they were in a position to allow, to to amplify what they believe he he stood for, they didn't do it. They didn't do it. Tell me I'm wrong on that. That's an ill flow right there because you know I'm right. You know I'm right. So I'm not blaming Ali. Speaking of Ali, here in the city of Cincinnati, we've got something called the Freedom Center. And I remember before there was a Freedom Center, we had a lot of debate about the Freedom Center. Matter of fact, I think I was, yeah, I think I was quoted in an article in City Beat about that. I may have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. I'm going to have to go back and see if I can get that clip. Just popped into my head. But anyway, uh, they were looking for, you know, different voices about the Freedom Center. And I remember sitting down. I might have sat down with Kathy Wilson, actually. Okay. The homegirl. Anyway, um, and, you know, what I'm reading now is that the Freedom Center is going to display some boxing gloves that Muhammad Ali signed. I, I. Now, listen, I I respect the good people who work at, at, at the Freedom Center, okay? Uh, but I don't want to go look at no goddamn boxing gloves, man. The hell? <laughs> what? <laughs> you want me to go downtown and pay for parking to look at some boxing gloves? Ah, we are living in the last days of common sense, my friends. I'm not going to do that. I'm just telling you straight up. Now, they've got an event or something like that, and they'd like me to come in and moderate our host. Then I'll go look in the boxing gloves. But just out there on a Sunday, like, hey, babe, what do you want to do? <sighs> well, Ali just passed. Why don't we go look at some gloves that he signed? That's what you're going to do? Oh, let me read about this because I, I don't want to be wrong. The flow can be so sharp. And I don't want to be wrong. Let me see. Um, let me see. Let's see. We'll say Ali Freedom Center. I want to make sure. I want to make sure before we give this to them. Yeah, the Freedom Center to display gloves signed by the greatest. And maybe that speaks to like the local mentality, the local mental matrix. I mean, we've got a big sports fan culture. And so within the sports fan culture, I know you've got a lot of folks that revere like these artifacts and paraphernalia, things that are signed by folks. So maybe that's what it is. But that's it. <laughs> that's, that's all you're going to do. Maybe there's more to it. Let, let, let's be fair here. A pair of boxing gloves is set to become the newest item on display at the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center. Not just any boxing gloves. These mitts are signed by the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Uh, Ali visited the museum several times since it opened in 2004. Um, Okay, I'm reading ahead here. And that's it. They're displaying some damn boxing gloves. Here's what I would say. 
if we here in the fine institutions of the city of Cincinnati are really want to um, uh, memorialize, uh, commemorate, uh, show your respects to uh, the great, tremendous contributions of 